Today we've got a treat for us and hopefully for you guys too. We're gonna be going out on a sailboat. Not just any sailboat, this is a Pogo 40. So they are fast. And I've never been on a boat like this before, so I'm excited to see what it's like. Sailing a Pogo versus sailing wisdom. The Pogo was such an awesome experience. Yeah. <laughs> so different. So fast. I mean, sailing a boat like the Pogo and sailing a boat like Wisdom, which is a Morgan 45 from 1968. Um, versus a modern racing boat. Yes. Uh, it's not even like in the same class. <laughs> yeah, this isn't apples to oranges. This is like no. apples to chestnuts. Yeah. <laughs> Or like apples to chairs. <laughs> yeah. The pogo is speed, agility, it's light. Uh, the handling is so fast. It's such a responsive helm. Yeah, it's amazing. is catered perfectly so that you can just have the perfect amount of speed, as much speed as possible in any given situation. And at any point of sale. That's right. Uh, wisdom. Wisdom is heavy, full of stuff. Uh, the sales, you know, we, we, we save them. We set them so that they last, you know, rather than pushing them, pushing them, pushing them so that we can get just that quarter knot more of speed. It's a completely different experience to race versus to cruise. And we weren't racing when we were on the Pogo. In fact, we were, we were going... We were having fun. We were so having... We were, <laughs> we were going much slower than well, uh, the captain was used to, in fact. Yeah, we are doing between seven to eight knots, which is like our top speed was his slow day. Yes. <laughs> um, the, and, and this was seven to eight knots upwind. Yes. It was so amazing. The conditions were light. Um, there was not a lot of wind that day. The seas were... A little choppy. A little choppy. We yeah. were beating uh, the first half of the way. Um, and so it wasn't, it wasn't perfect conditions for a pogo. Like, we weren't seeing it at its best. Yeah. A bit more wind, and that sucker would have been screaming. <laughs> um, a few major, major differences between the Pogo and Wisdom. One is that the Pogo is not a liveaboard boat. It doesn't have all the storage and the stuff. Well, the thing is, it can't. Because right. it's a light, it is light displacement to ultra light displacement. Like, it, its idea is to be nothing in the water that just screams along with huge sails. If you were to put clothing on the port side, for instance, it would be ballast. Yeah. <laughs> Unwanted ballast. Like, when we were actually sailing and tacking, every time we changed tacks, we'd actually move the other sails to the mm -hmm. windward rail to get them up there because they were going to be ballast out there. Because if you didn't, it actually made a difference. It did. Whereas here... <laughs> Yeah, you sit wherever you want, load it up, doesn't matter. Yeah, it really doesn't matter. We have a full keel, uh, a long keel, and there's a little fin on the pogo. Yeah, but the other huge difference is just the displacement ratio. So we are a heavy displacement boat, and once you get into heavy displacement, they stop categorizing it because they no longer care. How and much we, do we weigh? We are 18, 18 tons, tons? Yeah. on a 32-foot waterline. <laughs> <laughs> and it's one of the first things that you learn when you're learning how to sail is that you're supposed to always stay on the windward side because your weight is ballast and that helps balance out the boat. You're never ever supposed to hang out on the leeward side because you're going to make the boat tip over. But That's our just favorite place something to, that we never yeah, think about. Our favorite place to hang out is the leeward side because you you lean into the backrest. You don't have to hold yourself up. Yeah. <laughs> because it doesn't matter what side you're on. It's not going to change our angle of heel. Our sails... Uh, we used to have a full batten main. Yeah, we actually took that. We, we took it off. It. We switched it for no battens. And we'll do a whole video on 
Yeah. On that, on battens versus no battens. But Power main is actually special in many ways. It's yes. missing a lot of things that are considered mandatory on modern <laughs> sales. Um, <laughs> for various reasons. Again, we'll go into those in a separate video, so yep. stay tuned uh, for a video about our main. But uh, that was a big difference. His sail was full batten, his main sail. Full batten and a square, square top, top main, which is just like the ultimate because the whole for thing is yes for performance because the whole reason is the highest wind speed is going to be higher up so the higher up your mast is the taller your mast the higher your sail is the better its wind is so why would you have the tiniest little point of a triangle up there in the most effective area versus having a giant wing up in the sky and we so, could really see the difference yeah now being how it's a very racy boat they, everything is tailored to like pushing it to the, like just as far as you can take it before something breaks. And that means that you're going to be reefing a lot later than we do <laughs> on the pogo. He, we waited until we were in a storm. Well, well, it wasn't a storm. In heavy weather. Yeah, a squall came up. When we were in the squall, we, we put the reef in and the reefing took seconds. Mm -hmm. Like It was so fast, we didn't even realize that it was happening. He just handed us two lines. He's like, pull these. And then, poop, we were reefed. <laughs> and wow. So lines led aft is awesome. Yeah, another huge difference was all of was just the cockpit setup. Um, all of the lines were led aft. Yeah, those, you never had to leave the cockpit. All the winches were on the cabin top, mm -hmm. and then it was a clutch bank. Uh, so that way, a single winch could then operate many different lines because it didn't have to stay on the winch. Where in our case, we have six winches just in the cockpit and then four more on the mast. We have winches everywhere. <laughs> uh, the, uh, another thing was the, uh, the technology oh, wow. <laughs> that that boat had. Yeah. The, the Pogo was completely set up as a, an ultra-modern technological boat. We, we never steered. <laughs> yeah, at one point I actually asked, can I steer? Yeah. He's like, sure, and he like hit some buttons, and then I was hand steering, and wow, that thing is responsive. Yes, everything is mega autopilot. Yeah. So he would tell us, oh, adjust 10 degrees, and you type in 10 degrees into this little computer thing, and then... It would do it. <laughs> it was crazy. Whereas for us... Yeah, we have Wendy. <laughs> <laughs> we have wind steering. Yeah. Uh, that's that's our automatic steering. We adjust Wendy, our wind steering, um, which means we barely ever touch the wheel as well, but it's a very different thing. We don't just type in numbers. We actually have to... Turn a paddle. Turn a paddle, give little tugs to some Yeah, lines. we pull some strings and yeah. see what happens. <laughs> Um, but you're never going to get exactly 10 degrees. You're never going to get exactly 20 degrees. It's, it's, yeah. it's all feeling for us. I was feeling a little bit sick earlier, but I'm much better now. Just staring at that unmoving island. <laughs> So we, we came to the uh, the island that's got that horseshoe shape that you see in all the, the pictures on Instagram and everything, and <laughs> we can't remember what it's called. This was our destination yeah. for today. So we're gonna we're gonna sail around it the slow way clockwise and check it out, see what all the hullabaloo is about, and then we'll head in the direction of Punta Delgada again. But this is really exciting. This is really awesome for two reasons. One, we get to see it by boat, and the other thing, I really wanted to see this rock when we sailed down here, and then we decided we weren't going to sail to San Miguel. So I kind of gave up on that hope. And then, today we get to, so it's super awesome. It's called Iliu de Villafranca.
thing. His nav station had a built-in PC that had an internet connection to it and, you know, all the wind charts and just everything on a computer. It was so neat and tidy. Yeah, it was... <laughs> It was impressive. Yeah. And then the other really cool thing was the uh, the dagger board. It was a swing keel. So you hit a button and keel goes up or keel goes down. That was... Yeah, that was cool. It was really neat. <laughs> it was like this giant trunk in the middle of the salon. Inside this huge box in the middle of the salon, which is you know used for you know storage inside. It's got fiddle blocks. So it's a really great handhold and really just very usable and uh, convertible space. Inside here lives the giant swing keel. So when it's up, the boat draws about a meter and change. When it's down, the boat draws three meters. So that's impressive. It's push button. You just hit a button, keel comes down. Hit it again, keel comes back up. It's really cool. In the middle here, we have the compression post for the mast because it's a deck step mast because race boats, so you want it more bendy. Oh, actually, speaking of the interior, that was a huge difference. Mm -hmm. So being how it's an ultralight boat, you have the space that the hull is going to occupy. And the more things you put in that space, the more weight that boat's gonna have. So the goal was to build it as engineered as possible to have as much air as possible inside and then the least amount of structure. That way it's a very light boat. So we're gonna take a little tour of a Pogo 40. So this is a class 40 yacht. So up forward to port, you got one head. Forward you got a berth, which is a sail locker because it's a race sailboat. Then you have the nav station and a quarter berth on one side. And then the galley on the other side with the uh, with the other quarter berth. There's no wasted space in this boat. And it's really cool to see how they can make everything serve at least two purposes, if not more, because you figure in this boat, weight is a huge factor. So you have to keep weight down. So you can't have a lot of frou-frou and, and junk and wasted space. So everything is uh, as light as possible, as strong as possible, and as useful as possible. Simplicity it, to the yeah, max. Like a minimalist dream. I, I really like this. <laughs> For our boat, the idea when they built it was slap more together because it's stronger as it gets heavier. Like our, our, uh, our boat is about strength and comfort. Yeah. <laughs> they did not care about weight unless they were going for more weight. Yeah. <laughs> then they cared. And thankfully, there were grab rails everywhere because that's a big issue on these modern boats that are just so beamy is you're standing inside and if you have a 14 foot beam and you're on one side of the boat and you're heeled really far, it's a 14 foot drop to the other side of the hall. So this one, thankfully having that really big trunk for the swing keel to come into, that gave you, it, it cut the room in half. So, yeah. so our it, beam yeah. is 11 feet at its widest. Yeah, so it's outside. Outside. Inside, it's probably about seven at its widest. At its widest. Yeah. Um, so if you fall over, which we do all the time, uh, you're going to be caught by something. Very and it's soon. probably going to be squishy. Yep. <laughs> squishy and very heavy. Yes. <laughs> that was actually a really big difference. Um, just sailing felt completely different because you were heeled over so much. We don't heel, especially with our Dyneema rigging. Our boat up top is so light and yeah, <laughs> the bottom is so heavy <laughs> yeah. that when we are in even heavy heavy weather the most we heal is maybe 20 degrees um, yeah so, at 20 we put a reef in yes. because we're healed over really far <laughs> um, and so it's like a totally different you have to be like really comfortable with just being super healed over like the other side of the boat is just totally in the water <laughs> and, it's and that's normal yeah <laughs> Things we really enjoyed about our ride on the Pogo. Uh, it was fast. It was fast. It was exciting. It was exhilarating. Yes. Like, you were just booking it. Yeah, it was really exciting. Yeah, even though he said we were going painfully slow, <laughs> we felt like we were flying. Like, it was, uh, it was an awesome ride. It was. It was really, really cool. And we were able to just say, hey, let's go to that island and back today. Yeah. Whereas on this boat, we would be like, Let's go to that island and back as like a little three-day journey. <laughs> you know, 
and it just wouldn't be worth it. You well, know, you can't just go out on a day sail in this yeah, we, boat. Yeah, we've never gone on a day sail. It's no. always a weekend thing. Yeah. No matter where we're going. Yeah, you don't just leave and come back because it takes you so long to get out there and you you aren't guaranteed a time when you are actually going to arrive back because we don't have a diesel motor. We have an electric motor. Actually, at one point, the wind got a little light when we were going around that island. Mm -hmm. So we actually, you know, motor sailed, which yeah. is a thing that we don't, we don't do. do. And it was really nice. He was like, oh, you know, we're not holding the speed. We'll just motor to keep that speed. That being said, um... A lot of people will be like, why the heck don't you just get a diesel now, now that you know? <laughs> the, diesel and lines let aft. Yeah. <laughs> Thing is, it's it's two very, you can call them both cruising. Even if, I mean, this guy was cruising on his pogo. He wasn't really racing it. No, he was. He was cruising on it. Yeah. Um, he did a transatlantic. Yeah. And... It's two very different styles of cruising. Mm -hmm. One is bringing your house with you. And one is getting there as fast as you can. Yeah, and it depends on what your goals are. If mm -hmm. your goals are, like, max speed and just the thrill of sailing under, like, ultimate performance, then, yeah. The pogo is better. Very much. <laughs> but if, like, I mean, there's times where we could go faster and we reef simply because comfort. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we go slowly, and that's the style we've chosen for ourselves. Mm -hmm. Um and it just makes us feel better to do it this way. But this just goes to show you how different it, it the styles of cruising can be, depending on who you are. And what you want and how you yeah. want to do it. Which is why you don't... There is no perfect cruising boat. Mm -hmm. It's just, you know, whatever boat you have that you like, go. And make it work. Yeah. We pass it off to you now. Uh, have you ever been on a pogo? Or any other racing type boat. Do you boat. prefer the racing uh, type boat over the... Plastic Classic. That's what they call this kind of boat. Oh, really? Yeah, because they're, they're fiberglass, but I was going like to call it a yachts. motor home on the water. <laughs> oh, Plastic Classic. <laughs> okay. Uh, what do you prefer? What, what, what makes you more comfortable? Let us know in the comments down below. We love hearing from you, and we love it when you participate in the conversation. We hope you enjoyed our experience on the Pogo, and we hope you stick with us for more adventures on Wisdom. At a much slower pace. <laughs>
receive postcards from our ports of call and messages directly to the boat, you can go ahead and become a patron using the link in the description down below.